All right, well, welcome to Diamond Dialogue, the Chat Realm interview show. Uh, joining me on this edition is the illustrious and edig- uh, ed- uh, I can't say the word enigmatic Spearmint Nitrate. How are you doing today, man? Hey, I'm doing good, Tinbeck. How are you doing? Doing excellent. So uh, you've been, uh, for, for anyone who is not familiar, you're the guy that does all the uh, cold opens for, for Justin and, uh, and uh, uh, Brian, and they're amazing. <laughs> It's oh, uh, hilarious. So, uh, I guess we'll, we'll start with the, the first one that I've actually wanted to know for a while. Um, what what are the origins of your chat handle? Like, how did you come up with uh, the? I mean, obviously you use SN for your chat handle because Spearmint, Spearmint Nitrate is uh, over the twelve character draconian limit of uh, of T two T two. But <laughs> I, I think I actually registered Spearmint Nitrate. Oh, I just did used you? SN in the chat because because uh, I didn't register it, so I can just type it right into the the thing really quick. Oh, there you go. But uh, so, so how'd you come up with, with spearmint nitrate? Okay, um, I'm kind of a chemistry nerd uh, in my spare time, which isn't much. And one of the things I really liked was uh, oil of wintergreen, which is just the stupidest compound imaginable. Because what it is, is it's a salicylic acid, and which is essentially aspirin and... Uh, uh, methanol, which is like a poison. So you take a poison and a medicine, you mix them together, and you get, uh, you know, th- this flavorant that they put in chewing gum. So I took <laughs> that, and I, I pivoted from that into a different flavor, and then I pivoted again into uh, a different group, because nitrates are the coolest group. So yeah. spearmint nitrate. All right, that's that's really cool, actually. It's a, an interesting. Yeah, because I, I have a I have a very strict philosophy that I will never use numbers in, in any of my account names because that's that's uh, you know unoriginal. You, you can always come up with something new, but it has to be two things. You just take two things, smack them together, you've got a new username. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I've never been a fan of numbers and names. It's uh, it's unoriginal. You know, it's it's like sure, okay, somebody took your real name. Find something else, man. Not not all the words ever made or taken, <laughs> you know. Yeah, like scarab beetle. I mean, you're never you're never gonna be able to get that on all of the things. Even if you right. get it once, you're never gonna get it again. Right. But just yeah, come up with something interesting and uh, memorable, and then you're good to go. So uh, most of us in the chat realm, sure you included, are uh, tech oriented. But uh, what's your favorite non-tech activity? Maybe in the outdoors, um, if you know what that is. <laughs> I, I, I live in a beautiful, uh, like, coastal area. So I, I, whenever I'm not behind the computer, I'm typically, you know, hiking or walking or something. Oh, awesome. That's amazing. I, I miss living uh, near the coast. I used to live in California. And every summer we'd spend a week and, uh, and rent a place at, at the beach. And it was just awesome. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, waking up and being... 100 yards from from the water's edge and just being able to swim whenever you wanted and everything it was yeah i yeah. miss the coast up in, up in northern california uh don't swim much you need a wetsuit it's all fucking yeah. really really cold yeah there yeah it's too cold up there <laughs> but uh, it's it's still nice actually the, the, the bay is all well mostly beautiful depending on which which parts you're looking at but you know yeah well awesome so you're uh you're an interesting twitterer you uh, <laughs> Twitter, tweeter, um, yeah. Either way, you uh, um, you used to not keep any of your tweets on there. You would you would delete a lot of them. But um, I'm sure you follow other people on Twitter. Who's their your favorite Twitter account that you follow? Oh, um, I, I can't really justify this, but the uh, the Taylor Swift infosec uh, oh. Twitter, because I, in my head, for some reason, I can still believe it's actually Taylor Swift. Right. And I, I just, whenever, because I don't actually follow it, but it occasionally it gets retweeted to, like, both of my, my Twitter accounts, my Experiment Nitrate and my other one. And I just see this, you know, Taylor Swift, and it, it's always <laughs> real Taylor Swift to me. Right, yeah, because the picture's there, and it helps, it helps the illusion. It's, uh, no, that's that's a good one, too. I love it. I, I do the same thing. I don't really, I don't follow um, that one, her, him. I don't know who actually t- does the tweeting, but... Uh, but, but I do catch a lot of people that retweet it, and it's just, yeah, it makes me chuckle every time. Uh, I mean, I'm sure most of it's terrible, and it just gets filtered out through me, but it's, right. I love that one. Yeah, that's too funny. So, uh, 
if you were given a superpower, I mean, besides the, the drawing one that you already have, um, what, what might that superpower be? And uh, what, what's the first thing you would do with it? All right. Um, I was thinking about this a lot because the obvious answer is to just like, I want infinitely fine control over all fundamental forces of nature or something and just... Uh, you can't wish for more wishes. Well, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you may as well get, pick something as powerful as possible. But right. um, I think, you know, because what I should do is I should pick something as low as possible on the magical power totem pole that'll make me the most happy for my uh, wish. And I think what that would be is like a 30 second redo, because if like, uh, you know, I could just sit there, you know, getting angrier and angrier and like, just shut off your fucking phone and then your phone would ring. <laughs> I, that would make me, you know, I'd go gazoon type and then you'd sneeze. Yeah, that would be fun. I would have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> no, that would be too funny. Or if you really mess something up, you go, oh, 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 control Z. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's try that again. Like, Undo. Yeah. What's the, uh, oh, there was a, there was a, a Futurama, wasn't it? Uh, Into the Wild Green Yonder or something? Where, where that was a, a trope of it? Or maybe it was the last episode they did. Where they, uh, had I know a, there was the one where they went around the universe like three or four times. Yeah, yeah, we went through time. <laughs> Bringing her around again. <laughs> um, no, there, there was the one where uh, he had the one minute uh, rewind or the 10 second rewind thing or whatever, but it had to recharge for 10 seconds. Oh. Yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a Nicolas Cage movie that uh, I, I, I have no clue what it was, but he was gambling. It was like playing blackjack or something, and there was this guy snake eyes. the camera feed from him. And he was like, okay, Nicolas Cage can somehow see the future, but only 30 seconds. And, yeah, that's, you know, that's Snake Eyes, isn't it? <laughs> that's, just, that's just not something people actually, that's not a reasonable conclusion to come to. So. Right, yeah, it's not, you know, it's not the simplest answer. It's probably not the right one. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Yeah, but that, that movie's totally Snake Eyes, if I remember right. It's been Snake Eyes. a billion years since I've seen it, but yeah. No, that's a that's a good idea. I like that thirty second rewind thing because it's not like the whole mastery over time either, which can can get sticky. You know, it's like, hey, give me give me a quick undo, I'll fix that, and then we'll just keep going on. <laughs> yeah, you mess something up, you know, fix it, do it again, plot the perfect path of the day because you wouldn't use it constantly. Eventually, you no. just go, well, okay, whatever. We're just gonna roll with whatever happens. Yeah, yeah, I think that would be a good one. No, no, I would use it like like TiVo, you know. Put me, put me back a few seconds, like you know, to, to see a catch on a game or something again, or to, you know, I, I'd do it in real life, watching some old man fall in a puddle or something. You know, I'm like, oh wait, 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 <laughs> you know, just spend like twenty minutes just rewinding the last thirty seconds, laughing my ass off at the yeah, guy. Sit there with the yo-yo, practicing thirty seconds at a time, and all of a sudden go from not knowing how to yo-yo to being like one of those crazy master yo-yoers. Yeah, yeah, be the the, the grand yo-yo master in in, in a couple days. <laughs> That's that's too good. Well, um, in, in the same sort of fantastical vein of that, um, if you could move to any planet, real or fictional, what would it be, and uh, what might your habitation look like? Mm. This one's tough because I, you know, most planets are not spectacular places to live. Earth is Earth is pretty much the nicest uh, place. I think I would move to Mars. It, you know, if I could, it, realistically, in like 20 years, I think I would actually, if I had the option, go to Mars. Mars would be cool. Yeah. Everything would be indoors, though, until we can we can figure out a way to, you know, like actually terraform the whole planet and pump a bunch of extra CO2 in the atmosphere, which, no, yeah, we seem to be pretty good at so far, so. <laughs> you know. Yeah, die from cancer at, you know, 50. Yeah, yeah. wouldn't be bad. <laughs> No, that sounds that sounds. I think Mars would be cool. I, I don't know that uh, it's not it's not going to happen probably in in you know minor your lifetime that we'll have regular yeah. trips and people living on Mars. But um, it's getting there. It's, it's getting there, and I'm I'm excited. I, I think that's that's kind of that's what people are going to do. We're going to explore and expand just like we did on Earth. We're just going to do it in other places, you know. So that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, hopefully, don't end in Armageddon before that. Get yeah. off Earth, then we can start Armageddon. Yeah, there, there you go. <laughs> So, uh, you, I, I, like I mentioned at the top of the show, you do the uh, drawings for the, the cold openings at the beginning of Night Attack. 
Uh, what were your inspiration for the, the Justin and Schwood characters? I mean, apart from, from trying to make them look a bit like themselves, but you have a very distinct drawing style with, with them and with the cold opens. Oh, um, well, it's mostly down to technique because, uh, you know, it, it's kind of form follows function. That The way they kind of have that silhouette and all that stuff, I just, uh, they just have a circle and I draw the hair on it. And uh, I can reuse that you know, hundreds of times without any trouble. So that's that's mostly why, you know, they have the noodle arms and I can do those in one brush stroke so it saves a bunch of time. Yeah, well, especially it's, with the animation. Yeah. Oh, that's that's excellent. And like I say, you that is definitely a superpower. You you and Len could go head to head and that would be an, an awesome battle. <laughs> well, uh, you know, because one of the things is you, you have to set the bar as low as possible if you're going to do something for a long time. Because uh, if you don't set the bar, it's something that you can maintain for... I, I've been doing this for, like, nearly a year now. And only got 40-some-odd, so it's, like, hitting 80%. But, you know, I'm, I'm maintaining, uh, you know, I'm able, to, I'm able to get a few weeks ahead every once in a while whenever I know I'm going to miss a week. It's, it's uh, good. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a little bit how I treat uh, Diamond Dialogue. I shoot for Saturdays cause to have a kind of regular day for people, but it's, it's better to be flexible. And sometimes, like, you know, if I can record probably two in a weekend, I would, but uh, my weekends are just usually too <laughs> too crammed for that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I definitely understand, though, get, getting ahead a little bit. And it's always a nice place to be like, hey, I can kind of relax for a minute and not have to worry about cranking stuff out. So... Brian and Justin, uh, you know, will send me like half a dozen tracks and I'll cut them up and do that for like two or three months. And that, that's great because uh, I'm sure eventually the, the other tracks that I didn't uh, or couldn't use will show up somewhere. And a lot of them are really, really funny. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of funny um, and cold opens, which one of them was the hardest to do because you were laughing the entire time you were trying to animate it? <laughs> Um, well, I can tell you which one was the hardest, uh, just on a technical level. It was the uh, goodbye to Captain Morgan because that was uh, that wasn't quite fully animated, but it all had lip sync, so that t that took about three times as long as normal. Oh right, that was uh, yeah, because that was the that would be the last Captain Morgan one you did, right? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Captain Morgan I think made a cameo since then, but that was the last uh, Captain Morgan episode. Yeah, the funniest. Um, I think I peaked at episode three. Actually, I rewatched that one recently, and it's it's really goddamn funny because I I've kind of shifted philosophy on how I do these. Originally, it was very much, uh, you know, trying to set a location and having the, the characters all play around in that space. But now it's much more just uh, they're in a vacuum in a void. They just kind of do stuff. You know, it, it's more acting now than it was. Uh, than it was at the beginning. I, I can see what you mean. It felt a little more maybe free form earlier on, but it was, it's still good because it's still like, like listening to the Night Attack tapes versus, or uh, you know, CDs, you know, for, for you people who don't know what tapes are, <laughs> or, uh, uh, or, or watching Night Attack, right? It's, it's two different animals, but it's still the same genus or something, you know, the same idea, the same comedy, but it's, very different settings yeah and i edit them down a little bit which i kind of feel bad about because you know i want to do as little work as possible and if i can cut out some dialogue then i do but that that's uh you know if you can compress them down and not lose anything or if i find a joke that uh justin and brian didn't actually put in there that that's when i'm i'm happiest <laughs> yeah, little things that you catch, you're like, oh, all right. And like the, the, the most recent one was uh, Brian talking about bleeding out of his eyes, and then Bonnie left, and uh, she just like left the room to talk to a dog or something. <laughs> I mean, because there was a dog barking. <laughs> and, uh, and I just put up a little sticky note that said, I want a divorce. It, yeah, that, that one amused me. Yeah, no, the little things like that are what really, really make me laugh on, on your cold open. So. Because it's, it's so, like, you're, you're going along with the joke and going with the joke, and then, bam, you get a little extra bit of funny that just makes it hilarious. <laughs> uh, I think there was one that had a uh, scrolling ticker tape at the bottom, and, it, like, a, 
Uh, its tax day took us tickling up 10%. <laughs> and... I didn't, yeah, I remember which one you're talking about, but I didn't get a chance to, to rewatch it and, and try to read all the stuff that was down there. It was, it, they were doing some, some news, some joke about news reports or something that. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was really good. Um, so do you, do you do any other forms of artwork? Or do you just do these animation? I, I do digital things? painting sometimes. Uh, mostly it's all animation. Oh, okay. So yeah. you, you do things kind of uh, like in the vein of like Lynn Peralta doing more cartoony type stuff, or do you do more... Um, uh, um, when I'm relaxing, I mostly do like landscapes because, oh. you know, well... It's good exercise. Uh, hard edge stuff, you know, when you're just working on the, the outlines, that that's super important to get down because that, that's how you go fast. It, you know, comic books are a medium designed to do super quick art turnaround, and that's why they develop that distinctive look, oh, if that okay. makes any sense. Yeah, where you get the hard lines, and then ink can you know just basically bucket fill the rest of it. Yeah, frame by frame animation is always a, a pain, but it's uh, it looks great. You know, if you if you have the time and you can do it, then that's uh, that's always the way to go. And and is that what you do with these? Is is frame by frame, or do you do something along the lines of I, I don't know, flash or or something? Well, the, the way I typically do it is uh, whoever talks first, I'll go through and animate. And by animate, I, what I typically do is they have a head clip then a body clip, and then I'll draw the face on and the arms. And I have separate layers that I do the face and arms and whatever props they have. Then I'll just uh, run through on keyframes typically and set them up and then bounce between the frames so you know if someone's standing up high and they drop down low they'll kind of crush down a little bit for one frame then bounce back up just oh, right. kind of to give a little more life but it's much faster than you know like the the rooster teeth animated adventures is what i always get compared to because uh shitty fast animation all looks the same <laughs> no and that's i i totally get what you mean because i'm by no means an artist, but I have done a bit of flash work and stuff like that, that, that mostly for you know programming other things that, that needed little flash clips. But um, yeah, it's it, it's that's the kind of animation that I can kind of get away with because I can you know just tween between stuff and you know like you say drop keyframes and and the stuff like that. But it's uh, anything more than that, and and I'm completely useless. Like if you need me to actually do drawing, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Well, I, I think that's one of the things I get away with is, uh, you know, do, the, those kind of big heads and uh, the bodies and that bounce between. You, you can do fairly expressive faces and you can get a lot more act. The Rooster Teeth uh, guy, you know, kind of got locked into his style and now he's stuck with it. But it, you can do quite a bit of acting even with uh, that little bit of uh, animation. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and it's like you say, you... you... It's simple, but it's it's expressive, and, and I think that that makes it you know the most fun to watch. Yeah, and, and they're fun to do. I mean, you're you're running through them as fast as they. Oh, did you lock up? Yeah, my uh, video froze. It looks like. <laughs> um, yeah, they're they're fun to do because you you know typically in animation you're dealing with like. A day you'll get a couple of seconds of work done, and then the next day you may run into a problem and only get one second done. Or you can go through and do a bunch of keys, and then you have to slug through them, and then you're stuck with lip sync, and lip sync always takes forever and is miserable because you can't listen to anything while you do it. <laughs> but you know, with these these I can just I can I can knock them out in like an hour, well, a couple hours, couple 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 hours, four, couple, five, couple, six couple. hours. <laughs> Oh, that's like I say. You do you do a great job with those, and uh, so if people want to, yeah, catch... I'm, I'm always I'm always really happy that people enjoy them because, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, it's great to have your your work enjoyed. But yeah, if, if people want to catch more of of what you do, uh, where where can they find you? Well, I have a, a YouTube channel. Uh, I think it's YouTube slash U slash Spearmint Nitrate. Oh, all right. Sure, if you search. Spe uh, spearmint nitrate on youtube you'll find it yeah yeah uh um 
Yeah, I try to upload all the videos. Uh, typically takes a couple of weeks, but they're all there and they're all in order, which YouTube makes very difficult to do. All right, excellent. And of course, you have your your Twitter, which is uh, mm -hmm. Spearmint N. Yep. And anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks so much for joining me and uh, even sticking through my freeze and just a little connection hiccup, but everything else went fine. Um, you can catch more of these interviews at tinvec.com slash dd. And uh, there's RSS and, and iTunes subscription links and everything over there as well. So we will see you next time. Once again, thank you so much for joining me, Spearman Nightshade. Well, thank you for having me. Very, very fun. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>